It doesn't take a genius to see, or lack thereof like myself, that things haven't gone according to plan for the Minnesota Vikings. I know that intro didn't make any sense. Hopefully you don't listen too much into it. But I hope you do listen to the fact that the Vikings do need to get back on track. Two straight losses, obviously. Point differential of four points doesn't exactly say that there's exactly a reason to panic right now but me being the chronic warrior that i am and the lack of sleep uh, that i've been getting for the last couple of weeks kind of plays into what i'm about to say in as to why the vikings truly need to get back on track and before we get into why like you need to get back on track make sure you guys like subscribe down below leave a like and uh, remember to also uh, subscribe as well we deeply appreciate all the love that we've gotten uh, and continue to get you guys are all truthfully awesome now that is over let's get into why the vikings need to get back on track so as we kind of just said the Bengals obviously a three-point loss there was not exactly how we wanted to get it done um not how we wanted to start off the season the vikings shot themselves in the foot way too much to count what was it? 18 penalties um didn't really start playing until the second half rough rough but week two against the Cardinals, um, I will be. I, I'm always the guy that looks for the silver lining. But even after that loss, it was a little rough. My beautiful fiance, she, you know, when the Arizona Cardinals were getting uh, down, or when the Vikings were getting into, excuse me, field goal range for Greg Joseph to try to kick it, she asked the question. She goes, "Oh, is that good?" No, baby, it's not good because. The Vikings haven't had kickers for a while, so I just kind of realized that, uh, you know, as I go along here. Everybody knows the Vikings don't have kickers, uh, and that it's it's going to be it's going to be hard to at least watch games from here on out if it does come down to a field goal. But I think there's a lot of reasons to be very confident and be very happy about the way things ended up. It's not like you lost, you know, 58 to three to the New York Jets. You lost against one of the best teams in the NFC uh, that has weapons all over the place on offense and a defense that's getting better uh, under a head coach that's putting it together. So there's a lot coming together for the Arizona Cardinals right now. There's some good things to take away, but. The Vikings need to get it back on track. They absolutely need to get back on track with a home win over the Seattle Seahawks this week. Now, we've already covered it at nauseum. You know, we've seen some good things from the Vikings so far. You've seen Kirk Cousins been playing some really good football lately um, so, so far through the first two games of the season. He's completing 71.6% of his passes, uh, 58 of 81 for 595 yards and five touchdowns, no picks, has a quarterback rating of 112.9, been sacked four times. You got Devil Cook that's had a uh, 192 yards on 42 carries, one rushing touchdown. And I mean, let's be honest, Dalvin Cook is going to continue to be this Vikings offense, and he's going to, I mean, that's just not going to change. But you also got this wide receiver group that is coming together. Guys like Adam Thielen, who has 15 catches on the year for 131 yards and three touchdowns. I mean, could we be able to see, could we please see a constant uh, Vikings wide receiver that has double digit touchdowns and then also the one that just stretches the field? I don't know. It's, you know, kind of like last year with the thing, the way things ended up with Justin Jefferson and Adam Thielen. Um, then also on the flip side of that, KJ Osborne. I mean, you got to love what you're seeing from this guy. 12 catches, 167 yards through the first two weeks of the NFL season here and a touchdown, including that 64-yarder. Man, I, if you are a Vikings fan right now and you're seeing that from KJ Osborne, you are elated because, I mean, if – Somebody would have told me a year ago at this time that KJ Osborne would be our number three and he'd be killing it. I would have asked what you're smoking and uh, just, yeah, that would have been the end of that. Because at the end of the day, I think that it comes down to the fact that the Vikings have needed a number three. They, they thought they had it in Chad Beebe, who uh, is going to be back next season. We'll see about it. Also, BC Johnson. Um, D.D. Westbrook also, I think, is going to have a little bit more of a bigger impact moving forward. Uh, and then you also got, like I said, you've also got Justin Jefferson in there, 11 catches, 136 yards and a touchdown. You also got Dalvin Cook, who's already caught eight passes this year. Still waiting on Tyler Conklin to have the impact that I think he should have, but we'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll definitely see as things kind of get unraveled here. And then on the defensive side of the football, back-to-back 100-yard games for the Vikings. Now, I get it, I get it, I get it. Now, it's, it's rough because the Cardinals are... In my mind, I think they're one of the most talented teams in the entire NFL. I get it. The offensive weaponry is out of this world, uh, and it's really it's really tough because it's 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 hard to be able to stop Kyler Murray, uh, and also at the flip side of that, be able to make plays, uh, you know, on defense and offense. And I get all of it. I get it. I get it. I get it. But if the fact that is if the fact remains that they have had a couple of back to back uh, over 100 yard games allowed, uh, not. Uh, total rushers, but you know J- Chase Edmonds had 46 yards, Kyler Murray had uh, 31 yards and a touchdown, and then also finally had James Conner who had 26 yards. So not exactly 
a hundred yard rusher but the week before that man oh man oh man this was just the Bengals just were, were able to run the football and be able to get it done and it was it was rough to see you thought it was going to be better um you know with guys like Michael Pierce and Davlin Tomlinson in the middle but I mean Joe Mixon just slashed the Vikings so two games of over 100 yards rushing the Vikings need to figure it out cut out the chunk plays for the run game um the pass defense hasn't been awful uh I think it could be a lot better, and I think it will get a lot better, especially with this new defensive line coming. Uh, but at the end of the day, Nick Vigil has been playing out of his mind a little bit. Uh, I'm, I'm extremely happy to see that. It has uh, 18 total tackles. Eric Kendricks doing Eric Kendricks things. Daniil Hunter, four sacks on the scene already, already. So there's a lot to be pumped up about, but it all starts on Sunday when the Vikings go on and take on the Seattle Seahawks at home. It really needs to start out, uh, and they need to get back on track. But let us know what you guys think. Make sure you guys like and subscribe down below. Leave a like and a comment. It helps people find the show we greatly appreciate all the support that we've gotten and continue to get you guys are all truthfully awesome and uh, once again we just love every single one of you guys check out our website at the sports podcast.com also please remember to give us a like and a follow um, down below uh, you'll find all of our social media uh, links in the description give us a listen on itunes as well as remember to give us a sub on itunes as well and if you have anything you'd like us to cover make sure you just leave it in the comment section down below or send us an email at the sports bp at yahoo.com but let us know what you guys think about the minnesota vikings needing to get back on track